you are watching, listening and enjoying Where My Pros At here on the Versus The World video YouTube channel. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hello guys, welcome back or welcome if this is your first time at our channel. My name is Lexi and this is my wonderful, handsome, amazing, furry partner, Ken. <laughs> and today we are discussing William Golding's Lord of the Flies. Now, this is a classic. Uh, this is probably not the first time you've heard of this book. I certainly hope not. I certainly <laughs> hope not. And I am desperate to know, what are your first impressions? So I read this book, first of all, much younger than I am now. Um, must have been 13 or it's so. kind of one of those requisite reading in, in schools because I think yes. I read it around the same age as well. It's a book of formative coming to age and uh, tribalism in, in humanity and learning what, what is to be human and the evil and the goodness within us all. Um, and it's, it's a very important book and a very well written one and uh, I don't think, I, as, as always, I didn't really appreciate it as a teenager. I didn't really understand it fully and I just thought it was kind of a boring story, I guess. And I thought it was sort of aimed at I don't know, school children who were in the 50s or 60s or something that would read this and go, oh, that's so cool, it's so full of adventure. Whereas we were so much more modern and interested in, you know, I don't know, like, what did I watch back then? Like Terminator films or something. <laughs> like, I just thought it was like boring compared to what we did. Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z, yeah. I thought it was just more inter less interesting than the entertainment we had available. Whereas reading it now, I realize what an important story it is. Yeah. And because I think it's just a, a failing of my teachers probably to explain the importance of it and the themes and um, I, I think also I probably didn't enjoy reading it because I probably read it page by page, you know, one page a week in class. You don't yeah, really get a feel for a story that way, yeah. you know. And more but, homework than anything. Yeah, exactly. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, I, I, reading it now, I thoroughly enjoyed this book. It was a very good read. What about yourself? This is one of the books that I think the closest I can come to describing the feeling of reading it as a child and reading it as an adult is when I read uh, Animal Farm. Mm -hmm. and reading Animal Farm as a child, I'm like, oh, this is a story about animal talking animals. And then reading it as an adult, I'm like, oh, okay, now I truly understand what the story is about. It was the same with this. Now, I was lucky enough to have have the audiobook but it was also narrated by William Golding himself so he had an, uh, a forward and, and, a, and a, a prelude and, and a, an afterward as well uh, and it was really interesting to hear him kind of describe the inspiration for the story as well as his reasons for writing it and I really there's something else that he said that really stuck with me and I love it I absolutely love it he said it doesn't, at the end of everything, it doesn't matter what I say this book is about. This book is up to the reader. As a writer, once you write something and you send it onto the world, it's no longer yours. It yeah. is the reader's. It is up to the reader to interpret. Yep. So for me personally, the way I interpreted this book is uh, this is a study on society in a, a microcosm of society, a little pocket of society. Um, and I think. William Golding's inspiration was that he read, I think it was like Robinson Crusoe, or there was some story about, you know, a boy who gets stuck in a desert island and he has the best time. And he was like, well, I want to write a story that's how, what actually would happen if boys got stuck on a desert island. And it turned into this monster, uh, this commentary on our society and the hair's breadth that we are like that we are between anarchy um, at all times. There's a reason, the reason why rules and civility and, 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 and these The social contract. Social contracts are important uh, and how we kind of put more importance on the wrong thing as well. I think the, you know, the importance was kind of given to the hunters, which for me was kind of the uh, take on the military, whereas Piggy was a bit more kind of science, a bit more kind of like how, how things work, how to, you know, use the glasses to make the, make, make fire. Um, that was kind of how I read it. So I, I just, I, it was, it was excellent. It was vicious and I, I just really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I, I, it was interesting what you said about the, the the hunters being similar to the army. I didn't really feel that. I thought I thought it was more of a discussion on the um, doing what you want to do versus what you need to do. I mean, I get that the hunters brought in food and that was important, but they also had berries and such. And the the hunters were intentionally avoiding other things that were needing done, such as the housing and making sure they had a fresh water supply and making sure they had sanitation and making sure they're pissing in the right place, right? <laughs> All that. 
Yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like, yeah, yeah, no, I, because, you know, the, I, the, for me, I would say, well, we as a society kind of ignore if we look at tax dollars and more money goes into our, you know, protecting the country and, and, and you know, mil military, then it would go into infrastructure. And That's a good point. So, it's a good part, very good no, parallel. Sorry, very good kind parallel. Of kind of played right my, into my, my point was more that it was playing into the, I, I guess you're still right, but I, I, my point is that it was. I'm always right. You are. <laughs> uh, that it's leaning into the, the human nature um, of doing what we want versus what we need. Um, and also the fact that these are boys. These are young boys, mm -hmm. right? And there's a societal pressure and cultural viewpoint that is also expressed as soon as the soldier arrives at the end, by the way. Um, oh, I thought you boys would have done better. Um, that, 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 so that, 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 that all li ties into it. That I think this culture of boys feeling that they need to be, have, need to be a leader or have a leader, first of all, um, that's something that's, that's inbuilt into, into our, our culture and what we teach young men is that you need, to, you need to lead or be led and that's the only two options that are available yeah. and so everybody just instantly subscribed to that and that, that caused issues, right? It caused problems because they didn't really want a democracy, not everybody wanted democracy, it ended up being whoever was strongest came first and the strongest person just did what they wanted to do um, and it was a really interesting insight into those formative years where you know, we often do that. We'll often as teenagers do things we want, not necessarily doing what's good for the community and not out of necessarily evil, but out of uh, personal uh, gratification uh, or, or sort of personal um, urges overwhelming. And usually it's lessons that we learn. You know, you often make a fool of yourself, embarrass yourself or let down your parents or whatever. And that's how we learn about that in society, how that's wrong. Yeah. But these boys didn't have that influence. Instead, they just kept going down that path. Yeah. I mean, also, I think recently uh, in our political um, atmosphere, I'm not going to go too, I, we're not a political channel, so I'm not going to go too far into that, but I think this kind of highlights, like, I think for me, this is the first time in my adult life where I felt like, oh, it feels like society doesn't, isn't playing by the rules that we normally play. There was a, it feels like there's a lot of blending of what's real and what reality is and, you know, kind of saying what we want to say and, you know, being, I think the internet also has a lot to play in that where it's this kind of anonymity is making it easier to disregard the rules of society and say what we want to say things you normally wouldn't say to someone to their face um, so I think this is this is a cautionary tale uh, about why it's important why we have a society why society works for humans and the pitfalls and the complex gray areas of building a society that that, that, that crop up yeah um, can I refer to something that's not at all literature um, Yesterday, I saw a fantastic Reddit post on, on I think, r slash uh, too afraid to ask, maybe, um, where somebody was, was saying something along the lines of, why does a good deed not outweigh a bad deed? And it's a very simple question that has a very interesting set of philosophy behind it. Um, but so the, the top answer, who was awarded an enormous number of awards on, on Reddit, because it was a great answer, which is, we live in a society that, that really relies on everybody to be good all the time. And whenever one person steps out of line and starts committing evil or doing things that do not help society but help him, themselves, such as stealing, right? It can enormously, and they put it in a really good metaphor. Um, if you have a roommate who is, um, you know, kind of indifferent, but never really an, an asshole, doesn't go out of the way to be an ass, doesn't go out of the way to do anything evil to you, might occasionally leave the dishes or whatever or be late with rent, but they're not trying to be malicious. Generally speaking, that person is much more preferable than the other, the other option where somebody is good 99% of the time. They'll do, your wash, they'll do your washing, they'll do your dishes, they'll clean up the whole apartment 99% of the time. But 1% of the time, they'll be actively malicious towards you and actually try to harm you. Mm -hmm. That is so much worse, even though there's 99% good. And I thought that was a really good analogy. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with this island. We, it doesn't really matter if the majority of the boys didn't mean any harm. The point was even a couple trying to do harm for whatever reason, yeah. massively offset all the good. bad apples spoil the bunch, I think yeah. is the, the kind of overused cliche phrase, but it, I mean, it's a cliche for a reason. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we could sit here and talk about all the different layers of this book. I, I, I think a beautiful thing about this book is that you, no matter wh where you lean politically, no matter where you are, you know, in your social class, uh, you will find a meeting in this. And it, it, yeah. 
I just think that we should all read it and we should all, it should all be a, a cautionary tale of what happens if we let things slide. Um, you know, and we, and we don't work together. No man is an island. <laughs> it's Even if you are a hermit who lives off in the mountains, you're still probably gonna, even Walden, you know, Walden's party still walked into town every two weeks to get supplies. Um, literature reference there. So, I don't know, I just really enjoyed this book. But also, I, can I just, there's this Please. little tangent. I have a fun fact about this book. So, Castle Rock, which is where the hunters and Jack Merriweather were, 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 court, were quartered, um, actually really, this book really inspired Stephen King. So you'll find the castle, the town of Castle Rock, shows up quite a lot in his stories. Also, it's hit the name of his production company, um, Ca Castle, castle Rock, Rock Entertainment. Yeah. yeah. No, that makes sense. I mean, it's such a for, like I said, it's a formative book for uh, both in the theme and for people who have read it, mm -hmm. especially authors, because this is a very well written book. There's a reason why this is recommended reading, uh, required reading, pretty much. I think this is probably on the list of a hundred books that you should read before you oh, die. Oh yeah, because it, it has to be. It has to be. Absolutely, is a book that you should read before you die. It, you know, and it's what's great is. All the books that we're recommending, they are not these long, stodgy things that like War and Peace. War and Peace that you think is gonna hard hard to get through. These are two hundred pages tops and three hundred pages tops. Two three hundred pages tops. And if you don't have time to read two or three hundred pages and change your life I don't know. You need to rearrange some things in your life, man. We all have sit down and yeah. Yeah, I mean like if it takes four hours out of your time and you can yeah. put it over a month and then do what an hour a week maybe that's yeah. just, that's that's toilet time man that's before bedtime time. that's i mean come on yeah. like, i'm i'm bad for it i love to watch youtube and sit down and binge my my tv shows but you know break it up occasionally and if you're gonna get into tequila mockingbird uh this book i think you know are, are ones that are absolutely rebecca but that's just personal Lolita, yeah this is just personal you should read these because it's it these these change they shape you they do they make you see the world better you make make you understand your place in the world i think i would challenge anyone to read these books and still feel like they're alone still feel like they don't understand what's going on in the world around them this is this is important this builds your soul this this builds your humanity and if you truly believe that you don't have the time to read a book then i recommend that you check out audible and we have a link if you want to uh, get your own audiobook completely for free on us. Uh, you can, in including this one actually, you can get this uh, via Audible. Uh, the link is above. Go check it out. Um, so, did you you listen to the audiobook version? I did. I really enjoyed the audiobook version. Yeah. Good narration. Oh well, I mean, it was it was William himself, so it was it was excellent. And you know, there's nothing like reading having an audiobook being read to you by the author. I just mm, feel like that's that special. you know, it is special. It is special, and you actually want to hear what they have to say afterwards and I don't know he just seemed like a like the kind of British old dude that you'd want to sit and have a whiskey and a biscuit with and talk about talk about high flute and themes of life I seem like a nice cool, cool dude and let's talk a little bit about the ending as well about the soldier who came to to, to collect them so the fire is raging through the forest That's right main the, uh, sorry I just like I felt I don't know if you picked this up but I found it really, really interesting, and maybe the crux of the whole book, where the British soldier comes upon these these boys who have completely fallen into anarchy, and he turns away in shame, like, oh, I thought British boys would be better behaved. It turns away in shame, and instead of looking at them, he looks off to his warship. Mm -hmm. I thought British boys would be better behaved. Than yeah. This. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty good. That's a good read. That's a good point. Um, I, uh, yeah, th th I was also going to comment on that I thought British boys would be better behaved than this. And it's, I think, I, I took it from a gender point of view as well. I thought British boys would be better behaved than this. It's, uh, there's an interesting age element there because they're assuming a sort of adult mentality in the boys, as if Boy Scouts will allow you to suddenly live on a tropical island that's previously undiscovered. Okay. Actually, William Golding, uh, he actually had something to say about that, why he chose boys. Mm -hmm. He said, first and foremost, because he he's like, I need to write what I know. Second, he says, he said he didn't think that there was any better example for a small, like, 
sample size of, of, a, of society than a group of boys stuck on a desert island. Because if you think about it, until recently, you know, women's liberation hasn't really been a thing. Society has been mainly dictated and shaped by men. I agree with him. I agree that this is, that, that, that's the right choice. Begrudgingly, I agree as well. Absolutely yes. the right choice. It does make sense to, to represent society, sadly. Mm -hmm. Though it won't always be. Um, yeah, and, and and the fact that they're boys is interesting as well because that, that shapes how they made their decisions and how they're reflecting the culture that has taught them. Yeah. And I thought that was fascinating. The ideas of masculinity. And, yes. And it's just, I think, especially for boys, especially for men, this is an important book to read. I'm a girl. I can't really say that. I don't know if you would agree with that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's good representation of masculinity and the, the toxic elements of it. Exactly. The toxic, but also, you know, there are good parts and you can see good parts of of, of masculinity and, and the ingenuity you know, masculine, masculine driven society yeah there's so many good things about it as well i don't want to focus just on the negative points even though the negative points are pretty much the point of the book yes. i would say yes but there are still you know examples of how counterpoints to jack merriweather's cruelty yeah um well it's interesting because Violence was one of the main problems of the book. The fact that they uh, accidentally lost one kid due to immaturity, and the fact that they just went off and did what they, they wanted lost to. Lost more than one. They, they, at the end, they didn't. They couldn't no, keep the, track the, of all. Yeah, them. my point is at the start, they yeah. lost one due to immaturity. Yeah, was, but then just, they lost others due to cruel acts and getting caught up in the excitement. Neglect. Just little ones just wandering away because no one was yeah. keeping track of them, and yeah. that's it, it. It's excellent. It is an excellent. Thing of how what what happens when you don't pay attention to even the smallest, most insignificant members of your society. Absolutely, yeah, that was, that's very true. Um, and what do you think of the, the specific characters? I think they all represented it, different things and themes and such. Let's talk with Peggy first. Cause he's a nice, clean, obvious one. Well, for me, like I said earlier, he, Peggy kind of represents intellectual intelligentsia. You know, not very good at manual labor, but you know, intelligent and and bit. Moni as well, uh, like have have a lot of improvements, a lot of comments, you know. Um. He represents a more pacifist view of society and uh, working together and the social contract is very important. Um, but he also represents some of the weak members of society and the fact that he couldn't build, he couldn't um, provide food, he didn't want to go hunting, he could barely see without his glasses, which he lost very quickly. He was a hindrance. Um, he yeah. was a hindrance to the group, generally speaking, except for what he was saying. The things that he said, that he he's a great idea of what a good manager could be. Exactly. Um, except for the fact that he wasn't very good at actually calming down situations and he ended up screaming a lot instead or holding, the, I have the conch, I have the conch. Yeah, and you know, that's, that's the thing is like when someone isn't, feels like they're not being heard they you know get more shrill yeah so i think that that you know that for me that that represented the intelligentsia the kind of you know the 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 brains of society who can be seen as a hindrance when it's a survival situation yes because um, i can tell you that uh elon musk you know you know your stuff with programming and clearly with business as well do in a zombie apocalypse yeah, probably do fine but actually. i imagine compared to well i imagine compared to the you know average blue collar worker who has learned how to do up their own home learned how to fix yeah. their own car learned how More to self-sufficient yeah exactly mm -hmm. exactly and you know there's i think definitely recently there is a, a huge cleave between the intelligentsia you know the, the the kind of liberal elites if you will and you know the more blue-collar aspects of America and what we need to realize is that we need each other yeah the, the, the one one isn't better than the other it's always good to be educated it's always good to you know but you don't have to be you don't have to be snooty about it you don't have to be up yourself just because you you, you you've read Chaucer you know yeah. I, 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 the, if you you know and you but you don't need to look, look down on people who can't build a carburetor either we uh, all absolutely have different talents and we're all important it's just as important as the other Peggy would have died if he was alone there and mm -hmm. evidently so would the rest of them if they were alone because without glasses they wouldn't have gotten saved yep without the glasses they wouldn't have fire without the fire they wouldn't have the smoke without the smoke they wouldn't have had the, the safety um, what do you think about the beast? I thought the beast was a fascinating concept mm -hmm. um, and it shows that the power of fear. It, it's the power of fear and the unknown, right? It's the power of darkness. It's the power of... Uh, it represented the, the, their fear of not going home, I guess, initially. But then their later... imagination's just running wild as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. And Jack used that. He used that as a weapon. And someone who, who can use fear as a weapon uh, to, to hurt people 
That's a scary person. That's that's. Well, I don't even remember the the youngling that was originally. Um, Simon. Yeah, well, is that the original one? The, the one the first who died. One? I think Simon was the one who died. Okay. Um, I know that Simon dies later on, doesn't he? Mm. I mean, the first one, the one that they didn't know the name of, just oh, disappeared. The one with the mark on his face or whatever. Oh, right. um, they said originally, like, he wandered off and probably got lost in the fire that happened at the start. But then later on, they say, oh, it might be the beast. And then they, so the beast represented the unknown, the dangers, and so on. And yeah. I thought that was really, the really interesting. The invader. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's and uh, you know, suddenly the beast is something that could have united them, but it ended up it ended up helping them split as well. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a fascinating concept. Yeah. Um, and what do you think about the Lord of the Flies? Well, I'm very upset, but I think that you know that's obviously spirituality, kind of that that for me that represented spirituality and 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 this kind of like primitive caveman esque you know thread that runs through all of us yeah uh, represented the fear I think I didn't notice on fear it represented the um, nature almost like the, the the fear the actual death and the reality of death that was occurring around them oh, and, yeah. and their own power to cause it because they killed that pig yeah they killed that pig and put his head on the spike yeah. so they are the ones who did that yeah I thought was interesting. I think, you, uh, you know, drunk on their first kill, drunk on this, you know, the sudden power that they had over life and death. Yeah. Um, that Including really their own. Mess with what messed with a person's head. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what do you think about the divide between uh, Jack and the, the other boy? Uh, Jack and Ralph? Yes. Yeah, I mean, that, that was very interesting. Um, Ralph, I think, was a really good kind of milk toast kind of, you know, middle, middle ground. Uh, he was an easy way for us as an audience to kind of put ourselves into the story. I think he was the easiest way to do that. Yeah, he, he mocked Piggy at the start, but at the same time he was kind of Piggy's friend. He needed Piggy, yeah. He was, yeah, you're right, he was very middle ground. And, and it, you know what makes a good leader? Someone who doesn't choose to be a leader often uh, make the best leaders. Yeah. And I think he's a good example of that because he didn't really want leadership, but he just did it because he saw that Jack wasn't a good one. Yeah. Um, but we also saw the failings of that when somebody like Jack comes along with power. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, final thoughts. What would your final review be? What would your final rating be? I mean, be? it was excellent. I'd give it a four out of five for myself. Um, what, are the, what are the failings that make it lose a star? Well, I think for me, because it's not quite like just my. It, it's not something that I would read again and again and again. That's the only re reason why I wouldn't give it the five stars. It's 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 an important book. I think that I would recommend it to anyone to read. I think that everyone should read it at least once. But you know, it's not my genre. I would say. Okay. Yeah. I would go with five stars. I would say this is a, a very important read that everybody should read. Um, who who speaks and reads English. Um, even. Well, I don't know what I don't. don't. Yeah, is it, is it, read it in Spanish if you want. To. It's a different story when it's translated, right? Same with everything. Um, and and so still, I don't. The themes, the themes are still there. I, I would hope so, um, but we never know. I'd say it's very important to read. Um, I, as a teenager, yeah, it's important to read, but I'd say it's more important to read it as a, a, you making the choice to read it yourself rather than being forced to read it. Yeah. Um, just like most books, um, it's a different story entirely when you read it out of choice. Yeah. Um, and reading it as an adult was insightful um, and you, you get a lot more out of the effort than you uh, than reading it as a teenager especially in the year 2021 yes indeed yeah you have been watching listening and enjoying where my pros at here on versus the world video youtube channel thank you so much for joining us today thank you guys yeah you can find us all over the interwebs um in all you can find us on our instagram our subreddit, our Goodreads community, Twitter, and probably some other places. Um, and our audi audible referral link, link, link as well, mm -hmm. um, all via one single place. So you don't need to remember all these different usernames and URLs. You just need to think of one. Linktr.ee slash where my pros at. Hey, 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 hey. Check us out there for everything, for all of your uh, literature reviewing and sometimes movie reviewing needs. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much for listening, guys. Yeah, thank you, guys. The, the internet is huge and vast and wide and you're here with us today so we really appreciate it we will see you next week hope you have a wonderful day and keep reading